Hello and welcome to a Fully Charged News episode. Now, I just want to quickly talk about pre-roll advertising on YouTube. Uh, as Fully Charged, we have no control over what YouTube decides to put on or what advertisers decide to put on as pre-roll adverts before we uh, do, before an episode of Fully Charged. Uh, very often it's an advert for a diesel SUV, it's for, a, you know, uh, ridiculous cars that have nothing to do with the show. It's very often cars, so clearly we're targeted by advertising people to do stuff, you know, to have car-related stuff, which is fine. And that, I mean, it's kind of irrelevant. I don't really care about it. Um, but we have heard recently many times on, on both comments on YouTube and on Twitter that often the pre-roll advertising is for a brand new Toyota product, an amazing new car. Yes, you've guessed it, it's the self-charging hybrid. Let it go, just let it go. Don't hold on to that sort of thing emotionally. Let it go. Okay, so basically a self-charging hybrid uh, <laughs> is a hybrid that doesn't need to be plugged in. No, you don't need to plug in a self-charging hybrid. It charges itself as you drive along. Brilliant piece of technology. To be fair to Toyota, I first drove uh, one of their brilliant Toyota Prius self-charging hybrids back in, well, it was about 16 years ago. Amazing cars really played a crucial role in uh, opening up the, the people to the idea of driving an electric vehicle. So what, that's what happened to me. You know, I absolutely, once I'd driven that, and it did go along sometimes for sometimes like a mile or two miles without using any petrol. Brilliant. Uh, it was never referred to as a self-charging hybrid. Now, what's happened to Toyota is hugely successful car. I think they've sold up to somewhere around 14 million worldwide. I mean, amazingly successful car. As you know, loads of taxis uh, are Priuses and they've proved themselves incredibly resilient. Uh, the, there's a, a couple of independently verified Prius taxis. I know one was in Seoul and South Korea, one was in New York City, that had done three quarters of a million miles on their original battery pack, which was still functioning fine. The cars were a wreck, but the batteries were still working. So big plus for batteries, big plus for Toyota for building incredibly reliable vehicles. And now they've started, the sales are dropping. I mean, the Prius is less attractive than it was at one time. And certainly a lot of people who might have bought a Prius, say five, 10 years ago, are now buying pure electric vehicles and, and uh, Toyota are feeling that. So they've launched a new ad campaign to educate people about hybrids, which uses this advert, which many of you have seen, where, the, where there's a Prius or an Auris hybrid driving along and it's overtaking like horses and carts, steam driven cars, old fashioned antique cars. And then it zooms past a man waiting, waiting, standing, waiting by an electric car that's charging. And guess what? That has annoyed one or two people. I have never in now nearly 10 years of owning electric cars stood by my car and waited for it to charge, waited it. I've never waited for it to charge. I just plug it in and walk away and do something else. Even if I ha I'm having to wait to go somewhere else, I don't stand there waiting for it to charge. So it was a deliberate assault on the notion of electric vehicles, which is triply ironic because Toyota, later this year, early next year, are launching their first 100% battery electric car. I find this upsetting because I know a lot of people who work at Toyota, they're amazing people. And I think this stupid advert really denigrates their brand. And I think it will come back to bite them. And it's been defended vociferously by Toyota. They're running this advert all over the world. I've seen it in amazing amounts of places in the last six months. All over Europe, in Australia, definitely it's running on the TV, the self-charging hybrid. Now, the vast majority of human beings aren't interested in cars. I have to remind myself of that because I'm relatively interested. I have to remind Johnny of it because he is interested. But most people, they just have cars because they need to get around and we've built a world that only allows you to, in many cases, to get somewhere using a car. There's no public transport, the trains are rubbish and too expensive, blah, 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 all the usuals. Uh, some people use cars, but they're not interested in them. They might know what colour it is. You know, they might know that it goes quite fast or it isn't very fast or anything. They're not interested. I know that. And therefore, when they're told that there's a self-charging hybrid, that rings very specific bells. Brilliant piece of marketing by Toyota. 
It's very specific bulbs. Oh, I quite like one of those electric ones, but I don't want to have to plug it in. Oh, here's one that charges itself. Yes, let me explain, just in case you don't know. It does charge itself when it drives along, but it can't drive along without fossil fuel in the tank. A Toyota Prius is a fossil fuel powered car. That's what it needs. So loads of people have been posting pictures of people filling up Priuses at petrol stations and gasoline stations, you know, which is obvious. And it's not, this isn't going to get to anyone who doesn't know this, but it definitely spreads more confusion around what is already a very confusing and challenging area for people who know nothing about cars and aren't that interested. Brilliant piece of marketing. It runs before this show very often. And all I can say is the money that Toyota are spending to promote that advert, some of it, a tiny fraction of it, is coming to us to help us make fully charge to utterly undermine everything they're saying with it. Most of it goes to Google, let's be honest. But as I said, most people are confused about the, the, the emerging electric car market. And there's a, a recent uh, survey that was done by What Car? Question mark magazine uh, that has underlined this. And I'm just going to read this bit of the report. The report stated that conflicting and confusing information on the latest generation of battery electric vehicles has created a knowledge gap for potential buyers, holding them back from choosing an EV as their next purchase. A new white paper from the UK's leading consumer champion and new car buying platform, What Car? Question mark, has found. So rubbish campaigns like the one, well, you know, brilliantly conceived but utterly misleading campaigns that Toyota have been uh, running, they really don't help that confusion. Anyway, forget it. Moving on. Cheaper pure electric cars, not self-charging hybrids, ones that you have to plug in, but are much, much cheaper to operate and run, as everyone accepts. Everyone. Anyway, uh, as many, I, I, I'm sure as many of you have noticed, that, and that's the thing that, I, that has worried me, there is a plethora of wonderful, big, new, massive electric cars that are now on sale or will be on sale in the near future. I'm talking big SUVs. You know, I won't even list them. You know the ones. We've, we've shown them all on this show. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's fantastic because if people buy those cars, wealthy people buy those cars, instead of buying a diesel SUV, they buy an electric SUV. That is a fantastic step forward. It will encourage greater installation of more charging, uh, public charging, all those things. That's all. It's all a positive. I'm not criticising that. It's great. But it, the vast majority of the population cannot afford a 60,000 to 100,000 pound dollar euro car, uh, you know, it's just ridiculously expensive. So, so it's wonderful that the likes of Honda, now Peugeot, uh, VW, uh, obviously Nissan and Renault are already doing it, but they're all making smaller, cheaper, mass produced, you know, we're talking mass produced electric cars. Uh, and there's a new one coming soon, which I didn't, I've only just found out about, Seat. I think that's how you pronounce it, isn't it? Anyway, launching a, a Spanish, we're launching a full range of electric cars. And most importantly, they will be under 20,000 euros, which at the time of recording is around 17 and a half thousand pounds or 22,000 US dollars. They start production in uh, Barcelona next year, 100% electric models, the Mi and the El Born. But it's the same old problem for all these well-established automotive manufacturers, the big old car brands. They've got this huge legacy of engine manufacturing. That, that they, you know, what do they do about that? Tens of thousands of people have got jobs in it, massive factories, massive, massive investment over hundreds of, well, a hundred years uh, to produce incredibly cheap, for, considering how incredibly concept complicated they are, incredibly cheap diesel and petrol engines. $3,000 is the average price to build a, a, a car's petrol engine. That is really, really, that is very, very cheap. You think how many parts there are in it? They, I mean, they lose money making these. They don't have to make money because they make so much money servicing them. I've said this before and I'll say it again. That's the problem that the big manufacturers are facing. Obviously, the likes of Neo, Tesla, all the startup companies, they don't have that legacy. They don't have that problem. They don't have a, you know, Bollinger Motors or um, Rivian. They don't have an, a legacy of an old engine plant that make, makes engines. They don't have to worry about it which is why I predict they have more chance of surviving than a lot of the big old fellas. 
So I'm partly sympathetic because it's a really complicated thing to solve, but I'm partly critical because they're dragging their feet. They are slowing down as much as possible the actual production and the, the, the distribution and the sales of electric vehicles. It's a deliberate policy. That's my take on it. There's a world shortage of electric vehicles and there's a massive growing demand for them. And these people are holding back. Not, they know they've got to do it. They know they will all be 100% electric in the next 10 years. They all know that. They all accept that. They are developing brilliant, new, cheaper, smaller electric cars that go further on one charge. That's all good. But the flip side is that... Oh, don't sell them yet. And I think they're deliberately instructing some of their sales teams in, in their showrooms to put people off buying an electric car. We have massive anecdotal evidence to back that up. Don't tell them to buy an electric car, tell them to buy the diesel, because we've got a metric ton to move, excuse my French. And, and the sales of diesels, dropping off the floor. They're, they're through the floor. They're hopeless. They're, global sales of diesels have dropped very dramatically in the last two years since Dieselgate. <coughs> don't mention it. Um, so I don't think this is entirely... I mean, I'll tell you why I'm thinking about this, because even in Norway, and let's face it, Norway, I get real preferential treatment for electric cars. I mean, all the Hyundai Konas have gone to Norway, all the Tesla Model 3s. No one looks at you. I've driven through Oslo in a Model 3. No one looks at you and goes, ooh, there's the new Tesla. They've all seen it for months. <sighs> it's a brilliant car, by the way. Review coming soon. But anyway, no, I won't talk about that now. The number of people we know, personally, we know, that is like Stuart from Fully Charged, who does all the editing and does brilliant stuff and runs the office. His mum has ordered a Hyundai Kona, 14 months. Doug Naylor, who writes Red Dwarf, has test driven a Kona and a, a Kia a Nero, loved them both, tried to order them. You've got to wait at least a year. This is, this is people with money who want to buy a new car. Really, really interesting that you can't buy one. And why can't you buy one? Because of battery shortages. No, no, there's no such thing. It's, that's a con job. So I'm calling out automotive makers on this micro podcast that I'm sure one or two of them actually might watch that I don't believe you. I think you could make the cars. I think you could flood this country with Hyundai Konas tomorrow and you're holding back deliberately. There we go. I don't usually get this radical about such a complex topic. Uh, good story. Finally, a brilliantly good story. Now, GridServe, some of you will have heard about this. It's really exciting. GridServe are a massive global renewable energy company that actually started life installing solar panels in Saudi Arabia to generate power to enable Saudi Arabia to pump oil along the pumps. It was all to do with heating and cooling the oil so it flows along the big pipes, crude oil. Fascinating. That's where they started, but they've really moved on. They are one of the biggest installers of solar, very specifically focused on solar around the world. Um, and they've just launched a billion pound scheme, not million, billion pound scheme in the UK to build 100 ultra rapid charge hubs across the UK, powered exclusively and specifically by solar stored in batteries. Massive solar canopy over it, so when it's raining, you're not in the rain. It's every electric driver's dream. They're really big, multiple charge units. You won't have to wait to plug in. There's not one or two, there's hundreds. Uh, a really reliable charging hub with staff on site, making sure all them are, they're all working. Multiple outlets, as I said, pa um, with a cafe, with toilets, with really fast Wi-Fi. I mean, it's just, I cannot wait to stop off at a grid serve charging hub. What is not to love about this uh, bit of news? Really pleased about that. And we will be uh, closely following the first build on Fully Charged show because um, this is genuinely excellent news. So that is all I've got time for. This is just a quick news update uh, with a quick explanation about self-charging cars. They don't self-charge their petrol cars, just to say that. Uh, and I just want to quickly thank a, a few amazing patrons who support Fully Charged for $10 a month or more as I always say, it's amazingly generous and we are so, believe me, at the moment we are like 250% reliant on Patreon. It's, though it's really vitally important that we continue to get this support on Patreon, we really appreciate it. We're, we're going to rejig the Patreon page so that it offers different 
benefits to Patreon users. So we'll announce that when we do it. We're about to update the Patreon page. But I just want to thank these people. Fraser McKay, Andrew Gaunt, Roger Cuthbert, Chris Hardesty, Anthony Green, Peter Ogboli, Stu Dean, Dan and Katrina Wilcox, Imo Bohm, and John Wesley. Thank you so much for supporting us. We really appreciate it. I'm going to try and call out more names soon because you, some people have been waiting literally years. Uh, just a quick mention for Fully Charged Live. Tickets are on sale now. Link is under this video of where you can get tickets. It's going to be, it is going to be amazing. There was a bit of touch and go early on, uh, possibly um, influenced slightly by the B word, which we're not going to mention. Uh, but now the companies are flooding in. There's going to be so much on display there. Such amazing cars. 100% electric DeLorean will be unveiled there. I can't tell you anymore. There's such amazing cars going to be on display. Plus 3,000 test drives, which you can pre-book. Plus amazing talks by brilliant people. Slightly more organised, the talks, than from last year. Proper dedicated theatres without a lot of noise all around. Much easier to, to take that in. Um, it's going to be brilliant. The fully charged Almanac, we've just had the corrected proofs back. It's so good because there's so many brilliant people have written for it. Link for the Almanac is on it. You can still get your name in the book if you want to. You can still support the fully charged Almanac. It's, it's coming out in uh, late November. It's going to be in time for Christmas. Real struggle to get it ready. Brilliant pictures, brilliant, beautifully produced book. It's going to be amazing. That's all. Um, so please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Have a look at the Patreon link if you've got any interest in that whatsoever. And as always, if you have been, uh, thank you for watching.